Hello and welcome to a new episode of uh, Love Muslims Critique Islam, Part 12, Slavery. Uh, throughout this series of videos, I'll be sharing with you the truth of Islam uh, that you just won't get from the mainstream media, nor will you get from Muslims. So uh, let me reveal to you the secrets Imams don't want you to know, and I'll take you on a journey of absolute it is normal for Muhammad to have um, slaves, both male and female, uh, thus been accepted into the doctrine of um, Islam. Uh, some would find themselves as uh, spoils of war, and um, <clears throat> some would be uh, traded. Uh, most would be uh, women and children, and uh, some women um, who were married will find their husbands and other male relatives killed, uh, except for a few lucky ones uh, who uh, could become eunuchs. Uh, eunuchs um, would always attract a higher price, uh, as they would often make better soldiers, and of course ideal guards for harems. Um, but um, Registration is not allowed in Islam, uh, so the men will have to be made into eunuchs uh, outside Islamic territory uh, before being shipped home to market. Uh, Muslims who take captive women as their concubine slave are really exercising their right to do so, and uh, Allah has given permission. Uh, but the Quran does specify that slaves must be treated well and uh, allows slaves for good conduct uh, to be able to buy their freedom and even tells the, the owner to financially contribute towards the cost. Um, most of the captured females would join uh, Muhammad's growing band of concubines and to become a member of his concubines uh, gave them a slightly elevated status uh, with more privileges than ordinary slaves and, and even more so, and uh, rules determining uh, the paternity and ownership of the concubines is outlined in Sharia law. <clears throat> Should a concubine become pregnant with her master's child, uh, she is elevated still further, and her child will have equal status with her master's wives. Uh, should a concubine be granted freedom, um, not let go as such, but uh, she will be promoted as a, as a mistress. Um, so the Quran is, uh, it well, does state the number of wives allowed uh, no more than four, uh, unless you're Muhammad, of course, uh, but the number of captured women you desire uh, for marriage is limitless. Now, through uh, jihad, uh, Islam expanded, and as the Islamic uh, empire grew, so did the ever increasing supply of slaves. Um, the slave trade was very lucrative and profitable for Muhammad, and uh, he would use his uh, network to buy and sell um, trade and use them as um, currency. People were a commodity and the result of spoils of war, uh, the uh, booty to be shared among his followers, uh, and all war prisoners would be automatically made a slave. Slave masters uh, would raid Christian based countries throughout the Ottoman Empire uh, from Spain to Asia. Christian boys from the ages of 8 to 20. Uh, were regularly taken from the homes by force and made to convert to Islam. Um, they would be trained as elite soldiers and uh, any parent that dared to resist uh, would be hanged uh, in their doorway. Uh, from the 15th century um, it has been estimated that around 1 million boys were taken in, in a practice that ended in the 19th century uh, when the Ottomans turned their attention to Africa. Um, raiding pirate parties from North Africa in the 16th and 18th centuries uh, would be dispatched to go uh, people hunting and uh, capture slaves throughout Western Europe, uh, traveling to Spain, uh, Italy, Portugal, France 
and uh, the British Isles, uh, even as far north as Iceland. Um, in Spain and Italy, churches would have uh, special collections to ransom their children back, uh, who were often kept in uh, horrendous conditions and worked to death. Islam in the Indian region took a hold from the 7th century uh, when the Arabs invaded um, the area to capture many Hindus uh, for various sultans. Uh, thousands of Indian slaves uh, were treated with severity and massacred as uh, temples and plantations were destroyed. Um, at any one time, it was estimated that the Sultan Feroz Shah held about 180,000 slaves in his court, uh, 40,000 uh, of which were palace guards in the 14th century. So um, it went on then. Um, in the uh, Islamic uh, Republic of uh, Mauritania uh, of West Africa, slavery has been part of their history since the 8th century when it became Islamic. And only black people were enslaved and uh, constrict conscripted into the Islamic army. Uh, several attempts have been made to outlaw slavery throughout the 20th century uh, when forming slave armies were revived in the early 1960s but have been met with stiff opposition. Some tried to defend slavery by citing that the slaves were merely servants who have been for the uh, families, the same families for generations, uh, but those uh, who have um, managed to escape uh, speak of harsh brutality and harsh treatments. Um, a 20 year civil war in Sudan came about after Islamic law came into force in 1983, uh, which split the country to two, north and south. The Islamic North frequently would capture and enslave the mainly Christian inhabitants of the south. Um, the same old familiar story would play out with men being killed, children put to slave work and women would become sex slaves. Um, and passed through the network of slave dealers and uh, really brutally treated. Um, similarly, in uh, Pakistan, it is uh, the mainly the Christian minority population who are used as very low paid labourers uh, employed by Muslims. Uh, a militant Islamic group would kidnap and enslave boys as young as six years old uh, from Christian villages keep them in poor conditions and beat them regularly to sell uh, for slave labour uh, or for sex work. In Islam, slavery was abolished centuries later in the Ottoman Empire. Uh, Tunisia and Egypt, uh, thanks to strong pressure from Christian-based uh, Western nations, uh, but in parts of Africa, it carried on to the 20th century after influence from the uh, from the UN uh, finally had it abolished, uh, it was um, as late as 1952 when Qatar outlawed it and was followed by Saudi Arabia and Yemen in 1962, uh, UAE in 1963, South Yemen in 1967 and finally uh, Oman in 1970. Islamic states uh, were the last to change. The practice of enslaving captured Christians goes on today, uh, unfortunately, and has been in the news uh, fairly recently uh, with uh, Leah Sharabu. Uh, she was the latest victim of uh, Islamic brutality uh, when she was kidnapped by Boko Haram uh, from her school in uh, Yobi State, Nigeria along with 110 of her schoolmates. Her friends have since been released after converting to Islam, but brave Leah is holding out and clinging on to her Christian faith, and uh, consequently her kidnappers have vowed to make her a slave for life for not converting. Uh, while the politically correct elite choose to do nothing Christians around the world continue to pray for her release. Muslims will argue that slavery uh, was in the Bible, uh, therefore is part of Christianity. Slavery is in the Bible, yes, uh, but uh, it's not 
like uh, the image of slavery that we have been uh, accustomed uh, to uh, with uh, whips, chains and, and uh, brutality. Um, slaves then uh, were treated more as family members uh, and part of the household in fact and uh, were even given an option to be freed after seven years uh, through um, a mosaic law uh, but didn't um, didn't choose to be so uh, often uh, and uh, chose to stay with their masters um, and um, considered them more as uh, employers rather than slave owners. Um, slavery is not part of Christianity as Jesus never had any and came to set the oppressed free. Uh, a fact not lost on William Wilberforce, uh, you can see here in the picture. Uh, he was a Christian English member of the British Parliament in 1780, uh, where he would continuously lobby for social reform. Uh, he spent 18 years putting forward motions to abolish slavery, uh, which was finally made law in 1833, shortly before he died. Um, and Britain led the world in being the first country to ban slavery. Whilst Christian nations were involved with the slave trade uh, in the Middle Ages, uh, they were the first to acknowledge its abomination and abolish the practice and follow God's example of setting free the Jews uh, from Egyptian slavery in Exodus. Slavery for Muslims is an infinite part of its nature and culture stemming from the pattern set by Muhammad uh, and his followers. Um, and Christians and uh, other non-believers would always be uh, their targeted victims. The Islamic text uh, doesn't describe um, black people very well, uh, to say the least. Um, Blacks are ugly and misshapen because they live in a hot country. Um, like the crow um, among mankind are the Zaini, that's the African blacks, uh, for they are the worst of men and the most vicious of creatures in character and temperament. And we know that the Zaini are the least intelligent and the least discerning of mankind and the least capable of understanding the consequences of actions. Uh, the Shu Ubaya uh, maintain that eloquence is prized for all people at all times and even the Zaini uh, despite their dimness, their boundless stupidity, their obtuseness, their crude perceptions and their evil dispositions uh, make long speeches. Well so do you mate. Well there we go. Uh, the picture there is of captured black slaves rescued by the British Royal Navy from Muslim slave trading ship uh, when Britain was enforcing its ban on slave trading in the 19th century. And uh, within Islamic texts there are several references to Muhammad owning black slaves and other reports describing the mistreatment of slaves um, where Muhammad uh, is smiling uh, while a slave is beaten for losing a camel. Uh, in Ibrahim Ishaq, page 243, Muhammad even describes Satan as a black man and that black people are going to hell. Uh, Surah 3106 and Surah 3960. And so we read this then uh, in uh, Abu Dawood book uh, 004, number 18142. This is narrated by Asma bint Abu Bakr. Um, we came out for performing Hajj uh, along with the Apostle of Allah when we reached Al Aray. Uh, the Apostle of Allah alighted and uh, we also alighted. Aisha sat beside the Apostle of Allah and I sat beside my father, Abu Bakr. Uh, the equipment and personal effects of Abu Bakr uh, and of the Apostle of Allah were placed with Abu Bakr's slave on a camel. Abu Bakr was sitting and waiting for his arrival. He arrived, but he had no camel with him. Uh, he asked, where is your camel? He replied, uh, I lost it last night. And Abu Bakr said, uh, well, here 
was only one camel even that you have lost. He then began to uh, beat him while the apostle of Allah was smiling, saying, look at this man who is in the sacred state, um, putting on Iram, uh, what is he doing? So what color was uh, Muhammad? Uh, well, Islam is quick and anxious to point out that Muhammad was Caucasian with the complexion of a white man. Uh, Abu Juhayfa uh, reported this. Uh, I saw Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, uh, that he had white complexion and had some white hair. Um, Salim uh, narrated that his father said this. Uh, Sometimes I remember the words of the poet when I was looking at the face of the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, uh, on the pulpit. He did not come down until all the water spouts in Al Madina were filled with rain. And I remember what the poet said. He has a white complexion and rain is sought by virtue of his countenance. He cares for the orphans and protects the widows. These are the words of Abu Talib. Now, uh, however, the usual discrepancies within the Islamic texts, uh, as you can see from the picture there, uh, in these two quotations concerning Muhammad's description, uh, and I'll let you decide which one is correct. Uh, so when asked what color Muhammad was, uh, the, um, the description came back as, well, not completely white. But then again, anyone who says that the prophet was black should be killed. <laughs> Uh, the Prophet was not black. The great Muhammad Ali, uh, three times heavyweight champion boxer of the world, uh, knocked himself out with uh, this uh, mishit of a punch aimed at the established white society in America when he changed his name in 1964. His name uh, at birth was uh, Cassius uh, Marcellus Clay. Uh, who was named after his father, who was named after uh, a politician who worked for Abraham Lincoln uh, for the abolition of slavery in America. Uh, but he changed his name when he converted to Islam in 1964 um, to that of two white owners of black slaves of the 7th century. Well, there we go. Poor man, misinformed. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this insight into Islam. Uh, in the next episode, I will be exploding the myth that Islam enriched Spanish culture. Uh, but in the meantime, it's bye-bye from me. Bye-bye.